Here's a list of the 5 VRChat worlds I'm going over today. They're quest compatible, but there's a few things I need to say before I start. First, understand that these worlds will oftentimes be a hit or miss, and conversing with people will honestly depend on your own skill in conversation. Second, it depends on time, place, and people, and PC-only worlds will be better for socializing due to the barrier of entry against quest kids. I rank these worlds based on my own personal experiences of how easy it was to actually meet normal people to talk to. Third, the worlds that I list are in no particular order, and if I'm missing your favorite world, well, that sucks. My opinions mean that I am 100% correct and factual and no one can say otherwise. Nah, I'm kidding. Just go ahead and comment what world I missed down below. Alright, let's start. World number one, no time to talk. One of the best worlds to meet a whole variety of interesting characters, but also to get public opinion. It's no secret that many content farmers like myself will go into this world to interview people, but I'll often join even when I'm not recording to kind of warm up socially. You can set your own preferences and it'll try to match you up with others with similar interests. The catch is you'll only have about two minutes to talk, but if you want to extend it for another two minutes, there's a button on the side both parties can press. You'll get your occasional kid and maybe someone who's acting a little creepy, but hey, it's VR chat. At the end of 10 rounds, everyone will be grouped up and it'll be one big mishmash of people conversing and it's a great moment to add anyone to your friends list if you felt like you vibed out with them. One of my best tips before entering this world is to think about a question or scenario you can wrap up in about 15 to 30 seconds and see what other people have to say. World number two, Just Be Club. Another popular club world that has often been a hit or a miss for many people, but if you can navigate your way outside of some of the screaming kids, Just Be Club is actually a pretty decent place to have conversations with people. Unironically, most of the mirror dwellers here, in my experience, hold better conversations than the ones at the Black Cat. I like to hang out upstairs. I don't know why, but it just seems like most of the good talks happen in this hallway. If you can find a good instance with good people, you might catch a group joking around downstairs or hanging out in this patio. And on the super rare occasion, maybe some people playing some cup pong. While I'd say about 70% of the crowd is a miss, I still wouldn't sleep on this world. One of my tips is, if you have bad graphics, I would recommend using the tablet in the front to lower some of the world settings. I found this to make the experience much more enjoyable for me. World number three, Japan Shrine. Japan Shrine is one of those worlds where you'll really have to initiate conversation with others due to its small world size. It might feel a little clicky, but I'd still go in with an open mind and say, hey, what's up? Japan Shrine is a very popular place for non-English speakers to come hang out in. It'll depend on what time zone you're in, but I've talked to a lot of Europeans and Asians who are excited to practice English and vice versa. Due to this world's popularity because of other content creators in the past, I've often found role players, musicians hilariously seducing their maidens, and groups of homies just vibing out. This world has always felt more fun to me, and it's definitely a nice change of pace from a lot of the darker indoor worlds VR chat has to offer. Of course, you'll still have your fair share of mirror dwellers here, but there's plenty of people who are looking for conversation. For this world, I would recommend it to people who want to try speaking new languages or even take the opportunity to help non-English speakers with their English, if they ask for it. World number four. Magic freeze tag. Social doesn't have to just mean talking to people. If you're nervous about speaking, games are a great way to get engaged with the group. Even the quest kids in this world are relatively normal, probably because they're horsing around. If you're frozen next to someone, you can strike up a conversation, talk smack, and yell for help as everyone is getting tagged. These are 5 minute rounds, unless the taggers get everyone. This world isn't that great for actually getting to know someone, but it's still a chance for you to talk to other people in the lobbies and be a kid again. For something a bit more laid back, you can try playing mini golf in VR chat, which is exactly what it sounds like. While you can play games with strangers in these worlds, I personally feel as though it's best to just shoot off a bunch of invitations to people on your friends list. During my time in VRChat, it's not often that I'll get invitations to join game worlds, but I'm usually down to play a few rounds of whatever game that my friends are inviting me to. Don't be afraid and be the one to initiate the room. World number 5. Never Have I Ever and for the last game on my list, it's Never Have I Ever Automated by Twisty10000. Though there are many types of these maps existing today, including the one in Drinking Night, Never Have I Ever Automated by Twisty10000 is a great map to just hop into. Like the name suggests, Twisty created this map with 1,200 prompts that he voiced himself. It has a wide variety of questions, and even if you don't have a lot of friends to play with, it's easy to just hop in and meet a lot of new people. Like a lot of other active world creators, Twisty will update his map depending on the season, and will hide easter eggs everywhere. You wouldn't expect a map like this to be quest compatible, but it indeed is. If you liked the video, like, subscribe, join my discord, and stay tuned for more virtual reality content. Peace!